Yeah, it really is on the next big thing. So it's a logic extension to Wikidata. Uh, but I'm really curious if, uh, I mean, that's maybe the bridge to the enterprise uh, world. I already see that uh, filling in forms is difficult for some people. I'm really curious how the data entry will happen uh, in such an ecosystem uh, if it's not done by machines, but by humans. I think that's one of the big challenges there. Yeah, I, I fully agree. The, um, and we will devote uh, specific resources to the UX research, to the UX design in order to, to figure that out, because we're trying to basically build an environment where people can code without calling it coding with, uh, and with, with people who don't experience, um, who don't have experience in coding can actually provide this kind of implementations and so on. So I'm super curious to see how, how well we'll be doing this and also how easily will we be able to make it accessible to the outside world. So I really think that for a professional environment, for example, having this large catalog of functions should be super useful. You should be able to, to easily reuse um, like, you know, functions to do calculations like interest um, over time or compound interest or to do things like, like budgeting to do things like um, s slot allocation and so on. All the things that you could already do, you know, with Lua and with, with new extensions and with uh, templates, but to have them come from a centralized place, to have them from a reusable catalog, I think this might be a powerful additional um, feature that will help you with making semantic media which is even faster to crank up to the shifting um, demands of your customers. Yeah, that's that's right. I mean, from, from what I've seen also in the enterprise, for example, a list of countries. I mean, we, we use countries, that's a, a simple building block, but uh, I, I once tried to query Wikidata and even that list is not really complete in all the languages. So I just wanted to have a list of all countries as they are at the moment in German and in English. It's, it's hard to get. And yeah. the other thing is the databases changes very often. So if you are querying it randomly and someone uh, entered some, let's say, uh, well, <laughs> not not so true facts. Then uh, you, you query them and suck them into your enterprise ecosystem. So it's also a matter of how trustable this information is. So on the one hand side, you want to have it wiki so that everyone can collaborate, but you need to have, well, let's say some kind of an approval or trust in these in these numbers and facts. Uh, otherwise, I mean. <laughs> We've seen the reality in some parts of the world where alternative facts are created. So, um, I mean, it, it should be clear what facts are. And uh, if, if you want to suck them in into your enterprise systems, then of course they need to be at some trust level. Yeah. Having been an ontologist at Google, I can tell you that much larger com uh, organizations than the one you've been probably working with have the exactly the same problem. So the discussion, what is a country, how to get a list of countries and so on, has been going on for years um, and inside of those organizations. And it, it, it might even be, you know, the different parts of the organizations have very different answers to that. And then you need to find some way to reconcile that. And what is a country might be different for, you know, for YouTube, then it is for shopping, then it is for um, for um, for the knowledge graph and so on, and it's 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 a very interesting and difficult problem indeed. <laughs> okay, um, Danny, what is the pu the purpose? Uh, it's it's incredibly difficult because if if a very uh, simple concept as country already has different definitions and different perspectives and di how are you going to um how are you i think it's in incredibly br brave of you to 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 even to even um discuss this subject and i think it's incredibly interesting and 
but it's also it's also very difficult. So I'm very glad that you are you are on the subject. <laughs> um, yes, I agree that it will be very difficult. But the one thing about AppSec Wikipedia um, that 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 is a very intentional thing and very painful for a lot of my uh, my friends in knowledge representation is that I'm intentionally not defining a formal semantics on on the representation in AppSec Wikipedia. I'm not making it a reasonable resource in the sense that we actually define what these terms mean. All we do is we want to represent it in a way that can be translated in natural language that produces text that humans agree with. Whether this produces a consistent model, whether this produces something you can directly reason about on, is something that we intentionally cut away from this. And it's a very painful thing because it feels like, oh, this is so close to the holy grail of um, representing the meaning of the natural language and be able to automatically reason over that. Um, but, but we intentionally pushing away this part. So, so it, it, was, it was actually Leibniz who thought that if we are able to represent the content of an encyclopedia or of, of text in, in an abstract manner, as we're doing here, that we would automatically get the mechanism that allows us to reason and ascertain the truth of any possible statement in that language that will have um, uh, that we will have a deduction method basically to put to rest all debates that a human could have in this language. And we are saying, no, this is not the case. We are cutting off the reasoning part. We are cutting off Leibniz's dream of being able to automatically a certain truth. All we're trying to do is to abstract away from a natural language and to describe this content in an abstract language. So Umberto Eco called the goal of this the ideal language, because again, it would be a language that would be isomorphic to the truth. That's the idea. That, that The idea is that the abstract language is automatically an ideal language. If you have an abstract language, you automatically get to a language that is isomorphic to the truth. And we are saying, actually, this is the thing that we have to cut apart. Even if you have an abstract language, you do not have an ideal language. You don't have something that's automatically reasonable, where you automatically can figure out what the truth is. And um, by this, we are basically pulling those things apart. And we are only looking at the abstract language part. And hopefully this will be much easier. So it's much, much easier to say X is a country without necessarily implying by that, that it has all the features that you put into the formal definition of a country. So by saying, you know, Scotland is a country in the north of the United Kingdom. As a sentence, this sounds completely fine, but if you would translate this naively into a formal reasoning system, you might run into all kinds of problems because you might, for example, say, oh no, a country can't be in the north of another country, it's, uh, and all these things. And, and, but, but as a natural language sentence, it's completely fine, right? And, and we are actually making this explicit cut. Um, and we totally are expecting that researchers will go in and take our abstract representation, try to make it into something reasonable, try to put it into a formal model and so on. But we are not the ones will be doing this. Um, we are stopping at this abstract point. Sorry, I really don't want to kidnap the whole session. You should probably go towards uh, the professional, um, uh, to the actual topic of the panel. I think we're going to have another panel on first day where we're going to talk more about the uh, aspects on, on knowledge presentation and so on. <laughs> so, but I, I'm afraid I might be not sniping the session with the topic. <laughs> No, no, that's uh, that's fine. I'm actually worried uh, more about your little one. I think she's she's about to have breakfast or so. So <laughs> we, we we don't want to let her starve. Okay, then in that case, so. I probably say bye. It was wonderful to have you. Sorry for stealing yeah. um, this part of the session. Have a great session. Have a great meeting. I'm looking forward to see the videos later. Thank you so much. Yeah. Take care, Danny. Thank you so much. To to stay, of course, but. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, 
let's uh, move on as as this the, the nature of these online sessions is that you know people maybe just joined in now um, uh, even if we just have uh, seen each other we should start with a short uh, introductory round so I'm just moderating this I'm, I'm Bernard so I, I'm not so important now uh, but I really would like to uh, you four panelists now shortly introduce yourselves uh, what is your current position and affiliation and my first question is uh, my, also what is your what is your background maybe and how did you end up in this wiki world with uh, having to do with wikis that would be my first question uh, maybe we start with with Simon because uh, yeah. Simon, I, I just met very briefly uh, last week uh, I've I have uh, known his 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 name uh, for some years, but we had we never really met until last week. So maybe you you would like to. Start. Uh, my video and mic made some problems. Can you hear me good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. I'm uh, Simon Dückert. I'm located in Nuremberg in Germany, and uh, since 20 years, I'm in the field of knowledge management and learning organization, mainly in the field with uh, larger corporations. Uh, we work a lot with companies like uh, Audi or Scheffler or Adidas. And in this field of knowledge management, you always have these two sides of the metal, like the knowledge as an object and knowledge as a flow or knowledge and learning. Uh, and in terms of uh, knowledge as a flow, like uh, the tools coming like from 2000s or so, uh, weblogs and discussion boards were a big thing. And then uh, going on from 2007 to 2008, there was a big wave in uh, corporate wikis, uh, starting with MediaWiki at the beginning, uh, which was then uh, sort of wiped out, I would say, by, um, by Confluence. So most of the wiki cases I know are run by Confluence. There are a few MediaWiki cases and a few DokuWiki cases, but it's mainly Confluence. So I'm really looking forward to that because I, I love wikis. And I think in the last years, with all the hype around like enterprise social networks, Office 365s, uh, wikis were a little bit on the sidetrack, but I think they deserve a better position in the discussion. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Uh, Alexander, you, you were not announced, but we asked you to, to, to join this panel now quite quite briefly. Can you please? Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks, again. Bernard, for having me here. Uh, yeah, Alexander Gesin, Managing Director and Partner at uh, Gesin IT. So we run uh, a very wiki-centric company since uh, more than 10 years now. Um, how did that happen? Well, uh, I've been programming since I'm 12 years old. So this was in the late 80s. And uh, also in the late 80s, I uh, earned my first money with computers. So uh, I was 14 or so when I get my first money. Uh, so this was public domain on Atari ST, so old stuff. So it was logic that I studied uh, information science. Um, and then I started my professional career as a product manager in a printing company. Um, so this is a position where you're facing the customers and translating customer requirements into requirements for the coding group. So this was customer facing. So my next stop was uh, uh, responsible for software development uh, a department at a laser manufacturer company. So it's an industrial production. But in this position, I was responsible for realizing software. The next step was process manager. And the final step was chief information officer. So I had a really 360 degree of what you can do with IT. And why I'm telling this, because in each position, I was missing a tool to persist the knowledge, to write documentation, to publish documentation, to keep track of changes. And that uh, were the point in the 2000s, early in the 2000s, where we uh, first started with some wikis. I think this was a Tiki wiki or Tuku wiki. I can't remember anymore. It's, it's quite, it's really a long time ago. And then uh, I found media wiki. And the first semantic media wiki I touched in 2008 or so. And since then, I'm really amazed of what you can do with it. Uh, and that's how it started. It was a miss, the missing tool for uh, getting things done for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Richard, 
maybe you would like to introduce how you ended up with Wiki. <laughs> you don't want to know. No, uh, <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm, no I'm I do. Normally, I, I, I am a historian, and um, so uh, by by accident, um, I wrote a book together with my colleagues uh, Anne Eversbach and Markus Glaser, and about Wiki, Wiki Web collaboration, and then it turns out that we get a customer um, via IBM Germany. And so we we came to another part and we said, hey, that's a great thing, Wiki, that's uh, that's innovative, that, that is uh, the future. And we thought about all the public wikis and ended up in the <laughs> enterprise sector, which is um, as well as interesting, but um, if you compare it now maybe to, to, to Denny's uh, visions, and, and and approaches and sometimes you think you, you work in a, a different field uh, really. so up today i'm responsible for the strategy um sales and marketing um at hello world and uh, so one part is market observation we look what, what are the others doing and um that's very interesting but we have or, or, or what I have learned in, over the last 10 years, 15 years is uh, it's, it's sometimes easy to say what we can do, uh, but it's really hard to do. Um, uh, you become more and more built humble. I hope I try. Uh, and <laughs> um, so it's, it's hard to, to bring standards, make, improve the quality, struggle with all these infrastructures, uh, on constraints, and you're really happy if somebody something works, and if people come together and uh, and help uh, to bring this forward. And uh, so, um, yeah. So we will talk about visions uh, about that. But what I do the most of the time is um, helping our own company and other companies to. Uh, Define situations and uh, and uh, define relationships and procedures. And that's a bit boring in the first plan, uh, place. But in the end, if you want to have a success in the long term, um, with a long perspective, this is the way how to do it. And uh, that was a hard learning, as the people say outside. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ed, uh, in order not to make it too too yeah. German, uh, we'd like to to uh, to learn why you ended up um, with um, wikis in the Netherlands. Uh, but, but you don't want me to to explain that in uh, Dutch, do you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> um, well, I was, I was, I worked with with Capgemini, so I I, I I've I've seen all aspects of uh, software development, and but then. Then I um, I ran into a guy in the street who was who was in local politics and he he said won't you join me and I said well that sounds like a great idea and then I called my from my work I called my son and I said well I want to so that's I believe in 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 the in the strength of the people so i said well i want a some some kind of wikipedia for our city so i called my son and said well, can you arrange that and he, he was a he, and still is a smart guy and he uh, installed the media wiki on the on the server of the website and 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 we had our first articles in um, in a few hours uh, up and running and uh, but I've soon found out that it's uh, not user friendly and difficult to maintain, and people don't um, join that very easily. And then a colleague, a colleague of mine at Capgemini, uh, mentioned Semantic Media Wiki, and then I thought, well, this sounds like a very interesting combination, a very interesting platform, because of course in my Capgemini time I also had developed some ideas about um, yeah we created large and expensive systems and there's a big gap between what what you really uh, want and need and what you can buy 
uh, because it's it's either standard software with all uh, and and you need to uh, adopt your organization to the software, or it's uh, custom built software and it's very complex and expensive, and you end up not getting what you want at the same time. So uh, so I was really uh, interested. So I started at Capgemini doing some uh, projects with um, with Semantic Media Wiki, and my customers were very uh, happy and very excited with that. And um, but Capgemini didn't like that, so they were saying, "Well, it, it's, perhaps it's better for you to uh, look for something else." And then I thought, "Well, this is the time to start for myself." So that's when how I ended up in Wikis and uh, started Wikibase uh, Solutions nine years ago, and. Um, and perhaps you know that I've, from the beginning, I had a different view, a different uh, focus. I never talked about uh, knowledge management. As a matter of fact, I I um, I had an uh, I didn't like knowledge management systems at all. Uh, I thought it was it it, it always felt like uh, we, as we say in in the Netherlands, as a dead horse that you have to. Uh, you have to pull the, the 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 dead horse, and you don't get anywhere with uh, knowledge uh, systems. So what I said from the beginning is, I want to be involved in systems that support primary processes of companies. I want uh, people to uh, to use our systems on a daily basis and be dependent on them for their success. So and and that has been a very interesting uh, journey. I'm sh definitely sure that we created systems that nobody else did, and 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 not, not even thought of doing that with MediaWiki. But it we learned a lot from that, and it was very interesting. Um, and that's and and uh, and that's where we are now. We are still doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'd like I'd like actually to to move the discussion for a moment away from an actual tool. So we we mentioned Confluence, MediaWiki, or other older wiki solutions. Uh, all of you have have uh, now many years experience of of uh, consulting or or implementing or uh, even experiencing wiki based way of working. So my next question would be. What are the maybe three success factors of why why do wiki projects work independent hopefully of the tool but what what does an, an organization have to do in order to to make success of the wiki way of working we, we, we don't have to go uh, uh, through this individually just the one who who wants to go first go first and the others maybe join in what do you think? It's an interesting question. I I, uh, I made a short presentation about this for a customer of ours, but I <laughs> I don't know if I have it. If I have it, <laughs> but, um, freedom is not uh, so. You you must have structure and it must be uh, user friendly. Uh, I think those are um, important for me. Uh, those are important success factors. To me, it's a little bit different. Um, I mean, why are you setting up a wiki or a knowledge base or how you would like to call it? Uh, basically, because you're missing something. So there's probably some knowledge somewhere in the company and uh, you want to get uh, to, to get it trackable. So you, you get, want to get it explicit and uh, to make it persistent and sustainable and so on. Uh, so that's from the company perspective, probably one goal uh, to run uh, such a system or a wiki. From the user perspective, it's different. From a user perspective, they really don't care if it's a wiki or a wacky or a wacky or something else. They really don't care what, what's the tool, the tool behind. Uh, it needs to be relevant for their daily work. So uh, when when we introduce wikis, it's it's usually not a, a technical project uh, where we install a thing and drop some nice templates in it, and then people start working. It's more like a journey, 
where people need to get uh, empowered to use it and uh, uh, to replace the discussions and the questions from the coffee maker towards the wiki system, querying the wiki instead. So, but it needs to be relevant. So uh, for that daily work, uh, if, if you're an information worker, uh, you're most of the time probably searching something in the company web, uh, you're compiling facts, you're creating documents and stuff. So that's that's your daily work, maybe creating spreadsheets uh, like we've seen in Danny's talk, uh, That that's your daily practice. Uh, and whenever you have been looking for something, not finding it, and then you have a, 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 a working knowledge base and you go there and you find it there, then this tool becomes relevant. And that's the, to me, one of the important success factors never start with an empty wiki because users go in there, they see some blank pages, they may become a second time, time and then they are lost. Mm -hmm. So uh, a wiki or knowledge base needs to be populated with user relevant content. And that's probably more important than the goal the, the company has, like making a knowledge explicit or so. That's completely different. You cannot do it without uh, uh, taking the user approach into account. Mm, I would completely agree to this um, and just add something. So what you you have um, something to offer content and you need to have a demand, you have people who need this content or information and um, looking for knowledge uh, or no, yeah, search for information and uh, become skilled or something like that. And if the answer is, uh, and then the second thing is, how do they get this? Um, uh, how is this organized? And if the answer is, um, that has to be structured, but this is dynamic and, uh, uh, and you have, um, yeah, you want to, to address this problem with collaboration, then you end up with a wiki and with nothing else. Um, that's the way it is. And um, that is, the, for me, uh, the important result is that a company or any sort of organization learns that uh, structuring the knowledge, restructuring, is part of the of a learning process. And it's uh, how the organization learns to deal with problems. Uh, or who is responsible, or how are we doing that, or what is the, are the plans for the futures, what are the experiences in the past, from the past. And um, if you accept that this is the way, how you can do this, and this is a completely different question. If you say, uh, I just want to find knowledge, then you're looking for a search, maybe. And a wiki is just an additional helpful tool. But um, if you want to, uh, want your, your colleagues and your, 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 the people to learn together uh, restructuring the content, um, then the wiki is the answer and then it's, then it's a, a successful uh, thing. Yeah. Content, people, structuring collaboratively, that's it. Well, if, uh, Richard, if I'm... I'm... Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, Simon. Go ahead. Well, we have we have uh, customers. We have, for example, a roof inspection um, system built on uh, MediaWiki, and it's uh, people that um, build and repair roofs that go on the on the on on the roof with their uh, smartphone or, or iPad, and they take pictures of uh, defects of the roof, and and it's put. What what is one thing is for sure that that this is really in the primary process. It's very structured. What they the information they enter there is, um, is structured according to ISO twenty six seven sixty seven. I think it's about um, uh, the condition of the roof, and that's being calculated. So it's automatically. Automatically, you get a report. So it's. I think it's all about knowledge, but it's it's very structured. It's very uh, um, the people that are have to add uh, have to contribute. They do that in a very uh, structured uh, way, and they want it to be very 
user friendly. They're on the roof there, and they they they. So it must be very easy for them to uh, to enter that information. It's very much in the in in the primary process because they need that information to send a report to the customer, and based on that they they make a. a uh, a maintenance plan and uh, proposals for for repair. Um, wh why wh why is that why is that essentially different from let's say knowledge uh, management for for such a company? So what I'm I'm saying uh, I did, uh, what I hate about knowledge management is when it's not in the primary process, it's something additional that people have to do next to their job. If you, you have to make knowledge management part of, you, of, 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 the, of the job you're doing and you have to be, uh, and the incentives, right, what you are paid for must be in the same um, be in the same direction as as uh, as knowledge management so so what i don't like about knowledge management if if it is a separate process it must be integrated in your in your process and i'm i think it's very interesting uh, to have people that are repairing roofs that they are part of the of the knowledge process of course yeah try that well when i thought about the top success factors top three I came up with uh, on the one hand have a good kickstart process like what we did is to create a, the first hundred days of wiki experience and did that in seven steps we stole a lot from the wiki patterns book by Stuart Marder with the do's and don'ts in the wiki like doing an initial structuring use templates do wiki seeding don't start with an empty wiki things like that then the number two is to have a, a dedicated wiki gardener team who plays the role that Wikimedia plays for Wikipedia inside the organization, who understands that the gardeners are not the editors, but they have to enable others to create content. And the third is what was already mentioned. We call that um, uh, create in the flow wiki use cases and not only above the flow wiki use cases. So by above the flow wiki use cases, we mean when we have time, sometimes we write our encyclopedia in contrast to we use wiki as a tool in our process and replace emails, replace office documents and so on. So this would be the three things I can think of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this exactly would, would lead me to, to one aspect that I was thinking of now during the, the pandemic. I mean, now all this online conferencing and online tools are uh are are becoming a massive push uh and uh, i mean of course uh wikis are not something that that will re replace some online meetings or, or video things but also tools like online tools for collaboration are becoming a massive push and uh the question is now um do you think uh, wikis especially uh, will also gain from this push or is this the end of wikis because uh, other tools maybe maybe more more sophisticated tools more with more user experience that they they come now around and they and in in uh, in five years nobody in, in in companies will will collaborate with wikis but they will all use some kind of other tools that are out there that now that are now flourishing because people are are uh, experiencing something that is there and, and that is promoted now during the during this digitalization well, from our, uh, from our observation they already had a push because a lot of ad hoc information that had to be created like how to work in home office tips and tricks how to access the network via vpn and so on all this stuff wasn't created in the classical learning management systems or content management systems but uh, because it has to be created really fast, it was done in wikis in a lot of times. So I think they they have a future and should have a future. My my hypothesis is always that the the internet lacks the internet like ten years. Everything we see in the internet happens in the internet ten years after, 
like wikis came up in, in 98 and we saw a big wiki wave in 2008. We had blocks in 95 and had a wiki a blog wave in 2005 and, and video portals and so on. Uh, but I think um, what is an aspect we saw in, in 2012, we had this big hype around enterprise social networks and collaboration suites like Connections, Jive, Office 365 and so on. Wikis survived this enterprise social network wave. I, we had no customer that like uh, deleted or phased out their wiki. But now with the Office 365 hype, they get under pressure because you can replace use cases like personal wikis and team wikis and project wikis with OneNote. And then you only have this big uh, corporate wiki like this encyclopedia use case being left. And I I recognize together with the with the aspect that Atlassian is doing a very bad policy on, on their pricing in terms of uh, how to make it easy for customers to stay with the wiki that we will see at least some of the corporate wiki use cases disappear in the next years. But that's just my observation. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, are there any uh, uh, questions to the panelists from the audience? Because uh, we will, of course, also take questions um, you can also uh, if you want to now uh, raise your voice you can also try to uh, join us here with audio and video and, and ask a question mm -hmm. um, doesn't seem like it so this was actually also a transition to the to the next aspect we wanted to to discuss um, you you mentioned you mentioned Confluence. Um, there was this uh, announcement that Confluence is uh, stopping selling server licenses. I think uh, in February next year. So they want to <laughs> force. They would call it invite users uh, to the to the to the cloud-based solution, which is something that I think Microsoft also wants to, wants to do. I mean, they are they are now. Uh, Offering Office 365 for for very low price, and you know everything should be in the cloud, which is for many use cases uh, quite re reasonable, I, I would guess. But then, but then there is the aspect of: Do we really want to have all the things out in the cloud, or do we want to have it on premise? So this is the one thing. And then you you also mentioned people move move away maybe from MediaWiki to Confluence. How can we? How can we? Uh, convince them to move back. So for, for those of you, for, for whatever reason, the conference cloud solution is, is, is not ideal. How can we convince them to move back maybe to MediaWiki okay. or uh, um, what, what do you maybe, think? Um, I mean, just a quick question to I think to, to what, what Iman said that uh, uh, things take some time. Yep. Uh, they will come back uh, if the pain is high enough. So now everyone uh, tries Slack everyone tries uh, teams everyone tries this and that i mean that's the perfect vendor login what will happen did you ever try to get out what has been written in slack and get this out and get this into a different tool i mean confluence is the same they've been really successfully creating uh, a commercial uh, wiki offering and now with such a huge user base they are in a comfortable situation where they can say okay we are only offering cloud. And our customers, for example, mostly use the wiki as management systems. So that's the DNA of a company. I don't want to have my company's DNA hosted at some Atlassian cloud or somewhere. I want to be the owner of this and not only technically the owner, but also being able uh, to, to get this sustainable. I mean, that's the perfect use case uh, for not only open source, but especially for MediaWiki, since I mean, MediaWiki is the software backend of the largest wiki in the world. And probably Wikipedia will not uh, within the, an, a year, not even in 10 years, radically sh change the underlying ecosystem. So if you invest and put your knowledge, so to say, 
into uh, such an, an ecosystem while well, you have already made a big step in sustainability. Of course, uh, I mean, we are techies, we are experienced in this field. Uh, you, you can try to explain this to the customer, but sometimes they need to feel the pain. And in the past, we had customers that they tried their luck with SharePoint and uh, the maintenance and uh, all these uh, things that as I would say classical non-semantic media wikis have. They felt the pain and they said, okay, we need to have different approaches um, to implement something like a don't repeat yourself principle. So I want to enter a fact once and reuse it everywhere. Like uh, Danny said in his talk, I mean, there are so many facts in the world. I don't want to enter it in several languages. I want to enter the population of Munich once and then I want to reuse it. And same is uh, for knowledge and companies. I want to enter a fact only once. And Semantic Media Week is the perfect tool to reuse facts. And that's what we've seen during the last 10 years, that people had enough pain to think about, okay, there needs to be something different. And uh, I think Semantic, Me Semantic Media Wiki uh, is uh, yeah, not, not recognized in such a way that uh, as it should be uh, as a solution for many, many uh, challenges. Uh, Bernard, I, I think that <clears throat> if you say, or as you put it, uh, to bring people back, I think they were, they were never here. Uh, you talk about Confluence uh, or Atlassian uh, customers. Um, I think they decided in the very early days that they want to have um, that sort of software for good reasons, uh, by the way. And so, so what we, ha we have done uh, in uh, Talo Welt in the last years was uh, to, to catch up to that development. And uh, if you, to, to answer the question, we, we are now in a situation uh, where I think it's not in the question of, uh, of, of features at the moment. So you can always, if the feature run, you can win or can lose. I think we have some, some, some great and unique extensions like the semantic is one of the best examples. Uh, we have some unique selling points. Okay, that's fine. But what the people, where the people come from, and uh, if I look at the comments by Rob also, it's much more than just a technical thing. It's uh, you have to look what what are the most what what are the most successful open source companies doing, and it's uh, yes they are improving the usability, they are improving the interoperability to other uh, systems. Um, to Jira, to, to Easy Redman or whatever uh, is important. But um, just very important is also that you have the services around that. You have a, a pricing system that is, um, don't make me think what I have to pay for. And uh, exactly that what Atlassian now is doing. Um, they are pressing the people, uh, companies under 500 employees into the cloud. And uh, you can have on premises, of course, but it's very expensive uh, in the future. They have the reason for do, to do so. Uh, we cannot rely on this. There's, there are, there is a push for us uh, uh, as uh, the digitalization is a push for us, um, but uh, we, we, we can use it, but we have to do our own homework. Uh, we have to uh, catch up. We have to uh, improve the quality professionalize our services, work on our ecosystem. Um, what people impress us in the end is get, I don't want, I, I want to get rid of my problems. And one of the problems is um, I don't want to care about updates, upgrades, if everything is running and uh, if different extensions fits together, um, uh, they expect this is running, so and um, so we're still working sometimes on that because we are in an open source environment, and uh, the development is is, is different um, from uh, from other approaches. But um, we, we have to broaden the view. Why are other solutions successful? And we can learn a lot of them. And it's um, yeah. I I would also hope that. Uh, um, conferences like this is is a way to to uh, share experiences not only on a technical side but also on um, how do you sell things 
in a good meaning um, so that is attractive to to use those uh, those tools and uh, the services behind it and learn from our customers yeah, because they are mm -hmm. they are the ones that use uh, what we do and we have a customer that is uh, that 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 has a lot of experience with different kinds of systems um, so they do they know and they know how difficult it is to to have a clean uh, to, to keep the the knowledge clean because if if you put everything in in uh, in in a wiki or in OneNote or in Office uh, 365, it's going to be eventually it's going to be a, a mess that you can't manage and you don't you have really no idea what 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 is the value of of the content. So you you need to have flexibility on one side and structure on the other side. So and you need to be able to manage uh, things. Um, and I think we are still looking for the 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 perfect uh, tool, and I think that Media Wiki and Semantic Media, Semantic Media Wiki and other other um, extensions and ways to approach things are provide really a unique flexibility and unique quality to uh, to provide that. So we are still. On a on a on a search for the 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 right the the right way, and I th and I think we are in a very good position to uh, to uh, to find the right way. So, Richard, I totally agree with you. You just have to learn and 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 work hard to uh, to do the right things to make to make things high quality, easy to do. By the way, that's one of the things that I think is is a is a success factor of uh, Media Wiki. When I was uh, working for Capgemini, my experience was that when a system gets larger and more complex, then new functionality becomes also more complex and more expensive. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, the larger a system gets, the more expensive and more difficult it is to add. Things. My experience with um, uh, media wiki based systems is that that's different. It's it's relatively easy to add things to a system that already is quite complex. Yeah. So and that, and I think that's a very uh, important thing for for large companies who want complex, large, and complex systems. Um, that's a very um, nice thought so it means that we we have we've had customers that that um, previously have got stuck in what we call a software swamp at, at a certain point you can't you can't get further backwards to the left to the right you're just stuck because it's too difficult to uh, to do to do anything i think so about ideas, and so I uh, one question to Simon Dickert would be: um, You are more um, on the way in the question how people learn in, in organizations and uh, what are concepts for that, what are strategies, and uh, so what I think that's always necessary is you have an idea how to do things, and for instance, how a wiki can help. Uh, so we are from from the enterprise wiki context, uh, context most probably see always the problems and the complexity and uh, because our customers see the complexity and they want the technical solutions and the templates for, for doing this but uh, how do you see that um so um are there uh, some approaches where you say okay uh, i have a set of tools like uh, um, messages and, and, and social um, social tools, but then there I need a wiki, and sometimes I don't need it. Or uh, OneNote is now better, fits better in in this regard. Is uh, so. Um, what are your experience in, yeah. in, in this field? Um, because it has to be within the workflow, but also in an idea, in an as you put it, operating system for learning. Yeah. Right. 
Well, like uh, use cases where we think about is, for example, if you have a vision and strategy of a company, for example, repositioning, and we work a lot in automotive industry where you go from uh, from uh, classical cars to electrical cars to autonomous driving, you think about what has the knowledge map of the organization to be in five to 10 years? Like what are new topics, new issues, uh, new new subject matters we have to think about? We create knowledge maps and Similar to the category system in, in Wikipedia, we think about what should the category system, aka the knowledge map of the organization should look 10 years from now, where do we already have departments or communities or anything that support us? And we invite them to the wiki because they don't have a home, they don't have a department or a project already to contribute to the wiki. Then we, for example, try to create communities of practice around these topics innovation topics, but also around uh, topics coming from the, I um, don't know what the English term is, in German it's Weiterbildungskatalog. It's the uh, the list of trainings you have normally in the internet where you say, if you have a training for CAD systems or agile project management, scrum and finance management and so on, a lot of the knowledge around these topics lives inside PowerPoint presentations. Why not put the literature lists and, and links and everything in the wiki. So the, the whole training and formal learning system feeds mm -hmm. the wiki. And in terms of collaboration, you had in the last like 10 years, all this hype around collaboration platforms, starting with Chive Connections, uh, Microsoft Teams, Slack and so on. But what this project-based, uh, or the, the question that the project-based tools never answer is what happens with the knowledge that is created inside the project after the project ends. Often these teams are archived and they've gone away. And if you're lucky, somebody is in the project saying, oh, two years uh, ago, we had this already. I pick out the one note from two years ago and copy paste all the lessons learned. But often it's just archived or deleted and it's gone. And there you have this in terms of the dynamics of, of handling the knowledge, the question, for example, which pages in a project OneNote, we should take some hours to preserve them and copy them from the OneNote to the Wiki, for example, and and uh, have that forever uh, in, in a perfect world, so to say. And for the questions of, of Bernhard, I tried to write down also, like how could the media Wiki or open source Wiki community profit from these moves from Atlassian? I think, one big disadvantage is, at least speaking from a from a corporate world of larger organizations, they are not PHP and MySQL worlds. It's really difficult to get PHP MySQL based applications inside the data centers. It's uh, a whole world of Java .dot .net and JS, and it's a, it's a problem for a tool like MediaWiki, I think. Then I then I wrote down that you need to have a good wiki farming functionality, like where you can create a new wiki just with a click, uh, like you create a new Teams or a new OneNote or a new SharePoint site. It's very easy in these tools. And also to provide the, se the user experience that users are used from these tools, like being mobile and responsive was a big issue in the Atlassian world for a long time. Uh, then having Visivik editors, which was mentioned in the in the chat already, is is a big issue. Uh, people are getting more and more used to synchronous editing, like it's a normal use case that you work synchronously with 12 or 15 people on a PowerPoint file, on an Excel sheet, on a Word document, in OneNote, in Microsoft Whiteboard. And if you don't have that as a feature, you fall behind the usability standards that people are used to. And uh, two other points. One is to to adopt this Web to Zero paradigm. Like uh, I think uh, it was that David Weinberger framed it as small pieces loosely joined, not not thinking of a wiki being just the tool covering it all, but being part of the ecosystem. I think a wiki has to be easily integrated in tools like Slack, where people do the communication, or Teams, or MetaMost, or Rocket Chat. No, because we always have this combination of of conversations. We, we see the, the move from uh, email towards chat-based tools uh, or discussion forum-based tools, discourse and things like that. But you need this document uh, part as well. And there you have to integrate very well. 
and uh, taking taking the context of the keynote before, uh, what a lot of companies are looking at are things like uh, Microsoft Project Cortex or the the SharePoint Syntax, where they create the knowledge graph out of the digital traces. Like you do not create the knowledge graph by hand by having an ontologist, but you know in the Office 365 ecosystem what is a project, what is a department, what is a location, because you have it already in your systems like Microsoft Dynamics and your databases and so on. And they, they take this and put this in a big knowledge graph and dynamically create SharePoint pages out of it without having this extra effort to create the ontology, so to say. Similar to Google, just using statistical methods in, in contrast to doing it manually. And this is where a lot of focus is at the moment, not so much in the practice, but a lot of hopes like feeding chatbots and, and uh, helping in the onboarding of new employees just by using that knowledge that's in that digital traces already. Yes, of course. Yeah, that's that's interesting, but at the same time, I think it is also scary. Uh, I mean, the, there's there's uh, the, uh, Microsoft just uh, announced something. I, I keep forgetting what what this is called, but it, it's basically, you know, tracing every every bit that you uh, as employee are doing, and then and then deriving uh, knowledge from it. I mean, this is uh, this is also something that. Uh, we, it is possible, obviously, technically, but I don't know if if, if yeah. I want to have yeah. my employee, you know, tracing my chats and then exploring knowledge that I know something about wikis yeah. and, this a, this and providing this knowledge to, to, to my this coworkers, a, a, a which I, I've never case you know, of dual use to, technology. Uh, I've never done this formal in, step. In the context of HR analytics, like uh, watching what people are doing or in a useful way. Uh, but the same what we see in the internet, like the move towards deep social, like a lot of conversations is is moved towards uh, chats like Telegram and WhatsApp and so on. You see this in the corporate world as well. People are chatting in Teams and so on. And for example, you have an easy way to to have a knowledge bot that you can add to a chat. If we two chatted and you ask me something because you know I know something on a, on a subject matter and I help you and provide you the solution, then it's in the corporate deep social. This means it's only in the chat we two can see. And now you have the feature to easily add this chatbot and he just extract this question answer pair and puts it to a public knowledge base. And that's an approach to uh, get the knowledge out of that deep social in the in the internal public domain again, which I think is a good thing because it, it's, it's not a progress if we if we move the um, uh, knowledge and information we had in the email inboxes in the past to the chat inboxes in the future. It's its hidden from all the employees in the same way, just in another tool. Mm -hmm. But of course, you can do a lot of, uh, you can think of uh, scenarios that feels like the circle, this film or book, uh, and, and watch all employees and observe them and so on if you use it in a bad way. I agree. But what if you, if you, uh... If you are the bot and you and you dive into the chat and you find something that is interesting and that it's uh, worthy to to let's say to to harvest and to put in the in the central knowledge base, what would you do with it? You would, but you really would want to have a system that pr provides some flexibility uh, for that. Yeah, that's that's what. That's what this uh, project Cortex and Syntax does. It tries to to figure out what the individual concepts are because they know, for example, if you create a team for a project and you title it with the name of the project, then the Cortex knows that this is the name of a project. And if there's a lot of ch a chat around this project and people are answering questions, you can dynamically create a FAQ for that project just out of the chats. And as Andreas uh, said in the chat, often you have project systems to preserve that knowledge and it might, would have been easy to copy paste this question and answer fragment to a public wiki, for example, but in practice, nobody's doing it. I'm, I'm not copying, uh, no. if, if Ben had asked me something and I answered in Slack, in 99% of the cases, I don't take this question answer couple in the Slack and copy it to a public FAQ. 
But if it's only like adding a knowledge bot to the chat and he, this knowledge bot extracts this question and answer couple automatically, perhaps these five seconds I invest if I think this is a question that's relevant to thousand other employees as well. And I think this is an interesting use of, of these technologies when, when a lot of uh, asking questions and answering and, and uh, finding knowledge, so to say, is happening in that chat domain where I can easily add a chatbot and, and extract it. Sounds like, like a good idea for the hackathon session, like creating Slack to SMW, like creating email to cool. SMW, like creating this uh, and that to SMW. Like not having just hmm. the extraction bot, but also the back end where let's say the result of what has been extracted is put into let's say a, a real graph or in, into the ecosystem uh, SMW opens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool idea. Yeah.